Good morning, everyone. Good morning. Good morning, everyone. We don't believe in waiting for folks to come on in. We just start getting to it uh, because we know your time is precious. Our time is precious. Uh, so we just want to encourage you like we do every Sunday. Uh, I'm, I'm glad to be alive. You know, people take this for granted, but whether you know it or not, uh, someone thought they were going to be able to come on this live uh, and to hear a word, but they didn't make it into today. So if you are living, if you are breathing in your right mind, that's something to give God uh, praise for because uh, God don't have to wake us up. He don't have to put breath in our body. And I know this is that old time preaching that folks don't preach no more. Uh, but the Lord really don't have to do anything for us. Uh, so everything he does for us is because of his goodness and his grace and his mercy Amen. and out of his uh, providence. OK, because uh, we, we aren't we haven't been that good. We haven't been that holy. We haven't been that righteous uh, for him to do anything for us. So anything God does for us is because he simply wanted to do it for us. So I'm just saying that to say. We can't begin to thank God for the deep things. We can't even worship God if we don't, if we're not people of gratitude. How can you worship a God that you don't even show gratitude towards? And I tell people, let's start with the basics. People always say, I'm a worshiper. I'm a worshiper. I'm this and that. Yeah. But you have to be a person of gratitude first. I can't worship somebody I can't even show gratitude towards. That's you right. see what I'm saying? Uh, babe, you want to welcome the folks? I just, <laughs> you know, I get going and I start. Hey guys, how you doing? Thank you for joining us today. Welcome to House of Love, Florida. Am I saying it right, babe? Yeah, but <laughs> House of Love, Florida. This is Evangelist Mandy, and this is Pastor Matt. We're thankful for you guys joining us this morning on our live. We're gonna go forth in the Word, and I see begin to talk about having a uh, being thankful, having a grateful heart. Mm -hmm. You know about the things that God has done for us um, concerning this year. Some people didn't make it up until this time, but the mm -hmm. fact that you're here. On this live, the fact that you're still here, that's enough mm -hmm. to give God glory. Amen. That's enough to give him praise. That's enough to tell him thank you because he didn't have to do it. God really doesn't owe us anything, but because of his sovereignty, because of his love for us, he grants us our heart's desire. Amen. So I'm just grateful and thankful to be here this morning. How about you? I am. I'm, I'm, I'm grateful as well. And you know what? I had something to say, but let's just flow from this point real quick. Uh, we, we live in a complaining uh, generation. We live in a complaining society. Uh, you know, we live in a society that finds it hard to be grateful and thankful. Uh, what's up, Ronnie? Uh, we find people that find it hard to be thankful and grateful for what they do have. Why? Because of media inundating us with a whole bunch of junk and the constant message is you deserve more. Go for more. Have more. And not saying that you should be complacent or anything like this, mm -hmm. but at some point, uh, that can be a threat from you being grateful for what you do have. Why? Because if you see on TV, get more money, get better credit, get a bigger house, get a bigger car. But that's not where God has you at in life. What is that going to cause you to do? It's going to cause you to murmur and it's going to cause you to complain. Yeah. Paul tells us, uh, you know, in one of his epistles that. Whatever state we find ourselves in, we need to be content. Yeah. Content is not complacent. Contentment just simply says, this is the level that God has me on. This is what he has allowed me to have in my possessions. May not be all the resources I have that I want. May not be the food I want to eat. May not be the clothes I want to wear. May not be the home that I want to live in. May not be the car that I want to drive. Contentment and complacency are not the same thing. That's right. Of course, we don't want you to be complacent and feel where you're at now in life is all there is because we should uh, shoot for more. But that can sometimes be an enemy, like I said, to a heart of gratitude. That's right. Why? Because if you're at level one but all you see on media and you hear even the people around you telling you hey shoot for more go for greater you may not be mastering the level that you're on right now that's right you may not you may not even be a good steward over uh the level that you're on now so it's not saying that one day you won't get to more and have what you want drive what you want go where you want mm -hmm. but we have to learn to be stewards over every level that we're mm -hmm. on currently you see what I'm saying? And especially with this uh, crisis that come, it, it, it has only highlighted uh, the negative mindset, the pessimistic mindset mm -hmm. of a lot of people. And I'm not even so much concerned about the world. I'm concerned about the body of Christ because we're supposed to be offering hope. 
letting people know that God is still good even in the midst of bad situations. That's right. That God is still sovereign. He reigns. He's just. He's loving even while we're going through bad times. But we find a lot of people in the body of Christ are complaining, murmuring, and complaining. Listen, so what? I, I see a whole lot of people that have more money than me. Some of my peers more money than me. They have bigger ministry platforms than me. Mm -hmm. They have better clothes than me. They have better cars than me. They have multiple homes, okay? Uh, they, they're doing well with their investments. But guess what? That's just not the level God has me on. I have to be a good steward and be grateful for what he has allowed me to have because guess okay. what? I have a beautiful wife. Well, number one, thank God that I have a relationship with Christ and that I'm in my right mind to even want to serve him. But he's given me a beautiful wife. You know, we have a roof over our head. And I know this is teaching that pe preachers don't teach no more in church. Uh, go for greater. God got more for you. Stretch yourself. No. Nah. Listen, we need to learn to be grateful. I got a roof over my head. I got a car to drive. You know, even though I'm not working for home, I still got a job and I can go to work every day. Okay. Do I want to be sitting on 10 million and all these stocks flourishing and being a forex trading guru and uh, have two mansions and on Las Solas on the beach? Of course, I want all of that. But how dare I overlook everything God has given me? The Bible says in the book of First Thessalonians chapter five and everything to give thanks. And that's the challenge that's up, that I'm issuing out to everyone. Stop looking at the life of other people. Stop looking at the fact, oh, they're doing better than me. They have more than me. Because when you do that, when you compare your life to another person's life, that stops you from being grateful and showing gratitude for what God has allowed you to have. And then the other side, like I just alluded to, is perhaps you would have more if maybe you're a better steward over what you have now. Uh, because the Bible says, like, you know, uh, if you're faithful over a few things, he'll make you ruler over many. And sometimes we have a hunger to want more because we see this person has more. But this person may be a good, was probably a good steward over the level that they were on before they got to that season. But if you're not a level, if you're not a good steward on that lower level, when you're managing a few resources, you only got a little bit of money, uh, you, you're paying most of your bills. If you're not a good steward and you can't show gratitude, uh, you know, and even thank God and say, tell God that he's good in the midst of everything. Why should you be blessed with something greater? Does that make sense? Mm -hmm. So we need to go back to this basic teaching of let's remember one thing, people of God. God don't owe us nothing. God don't owe us nothing. All right. Everything he does for us is out of the abundance, the goodness of his heart. So my encouragement, this wasn't even what we were going to talk about today, but it just fell in my spirit. My encouragement is stop complaining about what you don't have, the job you don't have, the vehicle uh, you don't have, the type of family you don't have. I wish I had a family, my family full of drama. At least you got a family. You complain mm -hmm. about things that God has given you instead of being grateful. In everything, give thanks, good or bad. Okay? Because how about this? I, I knew a gentleman that said he kept complaining uh, about his job. God, I, I, I'm tired of this job. I'm tired of going to this job. Uh, you need to do something. This is what he was telling me. And God, he said he woke up one day and his manager to a voicemail that says, don't come to work anymore. And he said, oh God, I didn't want you to do that. So you see... Things can always be taken away from us. This is another reason why. And guess what? I don't want to downplay your situation. So I don't even like to say, oh, there are people that are worse off than you. We got to stop saying that because we just need to deal with folks situation for what it is. And the, and the thing is, be grateful for what you do have. Be grateful for the things God has placed in your possession. The family he has given you. So what? They may be full of drama and they have their personality defects and quirks. But guess what? You go to somebody else's family, you're going to see other defects and other quirks and things like that. Be grateful. So what? Your car is putt putting and you got to put money in it. At least you have a vehicle. Be grateful. Go ahead, babe. I don't know. Praise the Lord. You said a mouthful. Like you said, be grateful for the things that you have. Sure. 
Um, mm -hmm. Paul said in Philippians 4, let me go ahead and start in 11. I'm, I'm sure you touched on it, but it says, I am not saying because I'm in need for I have learned to content whatever circumstance. I have learned to be content in whatever circumstances, right? So we understand that in this lifetime, se seasons will fluctuate, okay? Mm -hmm. Seasons of your life will fluctuate. Things will happen. Great doors will happen. Some doors will get shut in your face. But guess what? You have to learn to be content in all things because I believe God wants his people to be balanced. You know, the Bible says we're up, we're in this world, but not what we're not of this world. We're, we're thankful that we're able to partake in the goodness and we're able to partake in the land. But at the same time, um, he does not want us to set our affections on the things that's of this world. So that's why Paul was able to say that I learned to be content in whatever season that I am. Because guess what? My affections are not in the things that is of this world. Although I'm here, I understand that I'm just passing through. I'm not here to say I'm just passing through on an assignment that God has me for. So in whatever circumstance or whatever may come my way, I can be content in it. I can know that, you know what, this too shall pass. It's not here to last. It's not going to last, right? If, if As long as um, season, time, and harvest comes, guess what? Your season is going to change. It is but a temporary situation, babe. What would you say for those who think that they're going to stay in their particular circumstances for a long time? Uh... I say this to be an encouragement, and here's here's one thing, and I and, and I hate to be the Debbie Downer, but preachers, people of God, stop. I know we want to see good things happen for people, and I know we want to encourage people, but we got to stop telling folks all the time, God is about to pull you out of this thing. You about to come out of this thing. You about to uh, God is about to yank you out. You about to uh, have moment. We don't know how long somebody is going to be in the fire. I don't know how long you're going to be in the heat. OK, so what I will say is uh, be encouraged while you are where you are, because there is a purpose. God uses heat. He uses pressure. Yeah. He uses turmoil. Not saying that he brings it, but the Bible says all things work together for the good of them that love God and are called according to his purpose. He uses that heat, that pressure, that tension to mold you into who he has made you to be. That's right. Because how would it be if we we're able to eat cakes and pies and all of this stuff, you know, in real life, you know, we would get sick. We would develop all type of health issues. You know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. So we need some of the stuff that don't taste as good uh, to keep us, you know, in good health. So the same thing with the spiritual. If God was only giving us blessings, giving us money, healthy relationships, uh, you know, good careers and all of this stuff, thriving ministries. But he never let tension. He never let turmoil come. We would be crippled. And a lot of people that have had it good. Oh, uh, you know, because they've had it good and haven't really experienced adversity, their parents, grandparents mm -hmm. uh, and everybody else around them have shielded them uh, from some of the pressures in life. They don't know how to respond to adversity. So back to answer my wife's question is, if you're in the midst of the fire, you're going to have to stay there till the process is done. Mm -hmm. You stop trying to wreck your mind figuring out how long you're going to be dealing with the situation that you're dealing with. How long you're going to be dealing with this pain. How long you're going to be dealing with this backstabbing or this discord. How long you're going to be dealing with this drama, this tension. You don't know. God doesn't tell us. It could be two weeks. It could be two months. It could be two years. <laughs> but guess what? God is so good that even while you're in the fire, he's in the fire with you. That's right. And guess what? He's so good that... While he's in the fire with you, he's going to allow you to still prosper and accomplish some things without even coming out. Check this out. I want to give you two scriptural references to back up what I'm saying. The three Hebrew boys, when they were thrown, Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego, when they were thrown into the fiery furnace because they wouldn't bow down to the king, you know, guess what? Uh, they never came out. I don't recall reading in the story where they walked out of that fire because we always praying, God, deliver me from this. God, pull me out of this. We got to stop that. Mm -hmm. We need to pray that God teach us the lessons we need to learn and build the strength and endurance that we need built while we're in there. But nevertheless, the guards came back and said, oh, we threw three people in here, but we see four. Mm -hmm. Who is that other man? That was the Lord in the midst of the fire. And while they were in the midst, of the situation that they were going through, the fire could not burn them. So guess what? You don't have to come out of the fire to be free. So be grateful for where you're at because ultimately there may be some things in your personality, 
God uses things to cleanse our personality defects, our, the things in our heart, the wickedness, uh, you know, the, the, the sinfulness, the in, iniquities and things that we harbor in our heart. Guess what? God uses the pain and the pressures of life to work right. that stuff out of us. Why? Because you can't have uh, dirty hands and an impure heart and think you're going to receive anything from the Lord. You see what I'm saying? So guess what? Even while you're in the fire, and then the other uh, scripture passage I want to go to is in the book of Jeremiah 29 and 11. We all know that verse very well, and I mention this a lot because other people like to use it a lot. For I know the thoughts and plans I have for you, thoughts of good and not of evil, to give you hope and an expected end. Guess what? Guess what the context was of that passage? These people were in bondage because of sin. That's true. They were, in, they were under pressure. But guess what God told them? A few verses up in Jeremiah chapter 29 and 11, he said, don't let no preacher, and I'm, I'm, I'm just paraphrasing so you get to understand, don't let no preacher, don't let no apostle, don't let no bishop, don't let no prophet, don't let no dreamer, nobody come and tell you that you're coming out because you're not coming out. You're going to be in bondage for 70 years. But guess what? I'm so good to you and I'm going to bless you still that, guess what? You go ahead and build your homes. Uh, plant vineyards, drink good wine, get married, have babies. And then he tells them to pray for the land that they're in, that has them in captivity. So you see, uh, it's not your situation doesn't determine your blessings. Your situation doesn't determine what you can and can't have. Mm -hmm. Because how, mir how miraculous is that for somebody to know that you're in the fire? For somebody to see that you're going through hell and hot water, pressure, tension, turmoil? But they say, wow, they haven't lost their mind. Wow, they, they, they're they still thriving. They didn't release the book and they just got evicted out of their home. <laughs> or their spouse just left them and they just started a business. Guess what, people? Your situations doesn't determine what you can and can't have. So no matter where you find yourself in, everybody is at a different season. Like my wife was saying, the seasons do change and shift. You got to be grateful you got to be grateful for where you at because God is still good. And whether you know it or not, if you stop looking at what you don't have, mm -hmm. even while you're in the fire, and if you stop and think, you'll say, wow, I didn't know God was doing all of this for me while I was still going through this hell. So you're not in that hell. You're not in that hot water. You're not in that fiery furnace by yourself. Mm -hmm. God is still blessing you. Now, what we call blessings a lot of times is money, cars, clothes, and houses. But blessings go much further than that. You see what I'm saying? Because you got folks with all of that and they still not blessed. So I would tell you just an encouragement. Don't try to circumvent the process. Whatever the Lord is sending to your life to make you, to mold you, to conform you into his image. Guess what? Endure it. Because guess what? Like my wife said, seasons change. Mm -hmm. Timothy Wright, an old uh, gospel artist, he said, trouble don't last always. And guess what? I'm a living witness that it don't. This is what? Uh, May 3rd of 2020. Just in 2017, when I had moved to Florida, I was sleeping in my car when I didn't have money. And when I had the money, I would go get a hotel room and, and sleep in a hotel. And guess what? I was still getting up every day because I still had a job. You see what I'm saying? I still had my right mind, was able to wash my own body. I was able to put on my own clothes, barely have food because I had to decide food or gas money. But guess what? I was still thankful that what? Guess what? I'm still living. That's right. And I can always make a comeback as long as you're still living, as long as you're still breathing. You can make a comeback from whatever setback has come your way. So I trained myself. Catch this, y'all. And baby, I'm going to let you get some of this real quick, but I have to tell them this. Some people said, when I finally told them all that I was going through, the first thing they said was, I thought you was living it up in Florida. Mm -hmm. I, I, I didn't know you were going through all of that. And guess what? That made me smile because now I, I was able to minister to them and let them know, you don't have to look like what you're going through. That's true. And they said, man, you was on these sandy, sandy beaches and sunshine with boats and stuff. Well, they didn't know. I didn't have nowhere else to go, really. <laughs> so I, because I was going through what I was going through, I wasn't going to let my mind. I wasn't going to be depressed. Depressive symptoms did try to come. Mm -hmm. Depressive symptoms, anxiety symptoms, every other mental illness problem. 
Then different things try to come, but I refuse to give in. So I'm not this super saint. It was my, the relentlessness that the Holy Ghost put inside of me. It's the reason why I refuse to give in. And I said, God, you've been too good to me. Mm -hmm. So no matter if I got to sleep in this car, sleep in a hotel, or have a, a pack of bologna that need to last me three days, mm -hmm. so what? At least I have some bologna to eat. So guess what, people of God? I didn't try to circumvent the process. And check this out. I'm about to bless y'all with this, babe, and then I'm going to give it to you. <laughs> Stop looking for people to pull you out when you're going through hell. Mm -hmm. Because when people pull you out when you're going through hell, they're going to feel they're the ones that got you out of this. And I'm glad that I didn't really share with nobody all that I was going through. Why? Because when God did what he did, only he can get the glory. Amen. So stop looking for folks to come to your rescue. Number one, they don't owe you nothing. And number two, you want it to be done by God and only God supernaturally. Because when folks help you, they say, you see, I gave them a place to live uh, when they were sleeping on the street. Or I gave them some food. When people were trying to take credit. But when it's you and God, you ain't got no choice but to give him the glory. So people, be encouraged while you're in that fire. You're not going to come out before time. And I'm coming to tell you that as a prophet of God, you're not coming out that fire before it's time for you to come out. I don't care how much you pray. I don't care how much you fast. I don't care how much you give God the glory. I don't care who, what prophet you encounter. You're not coming out before it's time for you to come out. But the encouragement is when it's time to come out, you're going to come out. Amen. Amen. Go ahead, baby. You know, I, I feel like a lot of people rob themselves. Of their mm. next level because you want to come out of the process too early. So you end up robbing yourself. And the thing about it is, my um, <laughs> the church I used to attend, my spiritual father used to always tell me this. He said, he said, if you um circumvent the process, because everybody, everybody that tries to circumvent the process, you have to end up starting all over again, mm -hmm. right? Because when you get to that particular level, because you haven't gone through the particular processes that you needed to go through to maintain where you are, guess what end up happening? You got to start all over again because you didn't learn what you needed to learn. You didn't uh, obtain the things that God wanted to give you while you were going through the process or through the fire, so, so to say, or through the circumstance or whatever it is that got your back against the wall. God is trying to get something to you. Sometimes the enemy will have you to believe that, oh my God, you're going to fall flat on your face. You're going to lose in this situation. This situation mm -hmm. is going to have you coming out on the bottom. But may I submit to you, God is setting you up for something great. He is setting you up for something good. He is setting you up because he wants, there's an exchange that happened, even in a process, even when your back is against the wall. There's an exchange that happened. God is just trying to woo you into mm -hmm. his presence. When you feel like you can't get, give, when you feel like you have no way out, when you feel like, oh my God, I'm about to lose my mind, get into the presence of God. Tap into the glory of God. There is something that God is trying to get to you. So when you get to your next level, you're able to withstand that level. So we don't want to circumvent the process. We don't want to rob ourselves from the gift, mm -hmm. hallelujah, from the talent or from the discovery of something. Something that God is trying to get us to discover while we are going through the process. I mean, there's been many a times when my back has been against the wall. But my God, in those particular situations, I was able to discover different gifts and talents that I would have never discovered had I not gone through the fire, had I not gone through the process. Hallelujah. I, it was in those situations where I didn't know my way out. When I thought, okay, I was about to lose my car. Hallelujah. I couldn't pay my bills. But my God, when my back was against the wall, I discovered certain gifts and talents that was able to bring me out of the famine. Hallelujah. That was able to sustain me while I was going through. So don't rob yourself of the process. Don't try to circumvent it. Stop looking for a handout. Go through your process. Whoever God is calling to bless you while you're going through, they're going to come. But don't try to run out before time. It's just like uncooked food. Food that's being cooked in the oven. And when you take the food out too early, my God, it can make you sick. It becomes poisonous because it's not good. Have you ever had a steak that has not been cooked already? I'm talking about my island people. I ain't talking about the steak that they eat in the United States of America. I'm talking about the that are from the island 
in Bahamas, Haiti, Cuba. You know what I'm talking about. We like our food well done. My God, when God put bring you out of the process, he want to make sure that you are well done. God does not want us, hallelujah, going before our time. And we have not been, hallelujah, vetted in the spirit. We have not gone through the proper channels. To come forth in the things that God has called us to come forth to. Because we want to go out prematurely. But I submit to you, stay in the process. God is trying to get something to you. He's trying to develop your gift. He's trying to develop your prayer life. He's trying to develop your ear. Not to be able to hear what God is saying. The Bible says, do you hear what the Spirit is saying to the church? Sometimes God is talking. But because we're too focused on what we're going through. We're not able to hear what God is saying. In the midst of the circumstances. Because we're trying to circumvent the process. We're trying to come out too early. But I dare you if you would just submit yourself under the hands of God. In due time, God will raise you up. In due time, God will resurrect you to the place that he is calling you to be. (laughs) Praise the Lord. Go ahead, babe. All right, see, how do I follow behind that? But no, I want to really... My wife says some uh, uh, many powerful things, but the one thing I really want to really encourage you on is that just like she used the analogy with food, food that is not all the way done, you can't eat it. Either you, you know, you're going to have to put it back in there so it can get done. There are some people that need what you have. There are some people that need to eat you. You're, you're the bread that somebody needs. Okay, you like if you roll dough and when you put it in there, people that actually make bread, it has to stay in the heat for a while before it becomes edible. Am I right? So when you pull it out and it's still mushy, you can't eat that. Mm -hmm. So guess what? You cannot fulfill the plan of God for your life if you come out the fire too soon. Romans 8.28 says, and we know that all things... Work together for the good of them that love God and are called according to his purpose. Now, y'all may not like me when I say this, but I have to say it anyway. Sometimes your bad decisions and choices keep you in the fire longer than you need to be. Yes. All right. This is why Proverbs 3, 5 and 6 says, trust in the Lord with all your heart. Lean not to your own understanding and all your ways acknowledge him and he shall direct your path. Yes. Be careful when you're going through that you're not adding uh, insult to injury, that you're not adding pain to the pain that you're already going through, all right? Because a lot of times when we could persist on doing our own thing, and you got some folks that refuse to let that pride be broken from them, because sometimes God is trying to break certain levels of pride from our heart and our spirit, and he uses pressure. He uses the crushing mechanisms to break us from that. But some of us won't relinquish that pride, won't relinquish that sin, won't relinquish that iniquity, won't relinquish the the defects in our spiritual heart. The Bible says in in, uh, the book of Psalms, who can ascend into the holy hills or stand in his holy place? He that hath clean hands and a pure heart. Yes, Lord. You need clean hands and a pure heart. And unfortunately, only the fire can purify us. But even while you're going through the fire, you got to watch how you're going through. Because whether anybody has told you this or not, people of God, it's not just a matter of you going through. It matters how you go through. How you go through. Your attitude matters. Your mindset matters even in going through. Guess what? If you die in the midst of the situation of whatever you're going through, and we don't just mean literal, we mean symbolically, you know, figuratively speaking. Uh, But if you die in the midst, you can't expect to receive what God has for you after you come out. Guess what? It's a prerequisite that you go through the right way, your hell, your pain, your sorrow, your turmoil, your crushing, the right way with the right mindset, with the right spirit. Yes. In order to receive what the Lord has for you on the other side. And I come to submit to you today. There will be glory after this. Trouble again don't last always. Deal with what you need to deal with. And guess what? Here's the key. And I talk, and I talked about this at Bible study. You got to stop isolating yourself when you're going through hell. That is not the time to run off and isolate yourself. Ecclesiastes chapter 4, starting around verse 9 says... 
Two are better than one, yes. for they have a good reward for their labor. It goes on to say, if one falls, behold, he has another to lift him up. But then it goes on to say, but woe to him that is alone. Because if he fall, who's going to be there to pick him up? Okay. So stop trying to run into isolation when you're going oh through. God. This is when you need to be around people of strength, people that can speak a life into your situation. That's right. Not for folks to lie to you and tell you you're coming out when that may not be the case, but people to encourage you and to build up your strength. Amen. You see what I'm saying? That's what you need. Watch who you have around you. This is why also, uh, especially with this crisis that's going on, God is about to prune some connections. He's about to disconnect some folks from your life that never mean too well and you just couldn't see it because you love them that much. And I'm not just talking about romantic relationships. All right. Connections, business connections, mm -hmm. uh, even some family. You can be family, but doesn't mean they're good for your life. There are some folks that are poisonous. And if God, if you don't willingly give up the connections, because guess what? If, if you don't willingly give up the connections, let me finish that statement. God will do it for you. Check this out. Some of us have Job's friends in our life. Anybody know who Job's friends were? Those are the people when he was going through the most hell, his body had boils. His, uh, his wife and his kids had died. You know, uh, he had lost all that he had. Guess what his friends came on the scene doing? Not to encourage him, not to build him up, but they came saying, hey, man, you must have sinned. You must have did this wrong. You must have fell out of the right place with God. You must have said this. You must have did that. You don't need those type of people in your life. Mm -hmm. And I submit to you that even while you're going through, pray and ask God to send who he wants you to have in your life. Right. Because the reason why a lot of us are frustrated is because we're dependent on people to speak life into us. We're dependent on certain people to be there for us. But guess what? They don't owe us nothing. Stop telling folks, if you was a true friend, you'll be there for me. If you was, a, God may not want that. Perhaps mm -hmm. he may be trying to either build something in you where you can stand on your own, but at the same time, or he could be saying this connection is no longer good for you. That's right. You see what I'm saying? I've been there before. But I'm praying for each and every one of you while you're going through, when you come out, that you only be connected to who God wants you to be connected to. That's right. That you only have the relationships that he wants you to have. But going back to my point, stop running into isolation. Stop letting the devil tell you that everybody is out to get your business and to gossip about you. Stop letting the enemy speak that. Everybody is not out to get you. Right. Everybody is not out to get right. your business right. and spread it around. Jesus. That goes back to Proverbs 3. Lean not to your own understanding. When you take it upon yourself to talk to folks, to share your business with people, and it's not who God led you to, then yes, you run that risk. But you ask God to put into your life the people that you need to have there because it's going to be very important. Because guess what? I don't care how long you've been walking with God. I don't care how much fasting and praying you do. If you go into isolation while the devil is whooping on you, he's going to win. That's right. You, you feel what I'm saying? He's going to win. That's, that's the reason the strength. It says bear one another's burdens. That's what the Bible says. This is not what Matt Johnson is saying. This is what the Bible says. Bear one another's burdens. Mm -hmm. Be strength. Be support. But guess what? I do have to re I do have to remind you of this. Your support system is not there to just tell you what you want to hear. That's right. And sometimes our support system tells us the wrong thing. Because I've had people to tell me, oh, uh, Prophet Johnson, Pastor Johnson, Elder Johnson, whatever they call, him, Matt. Uh, you coming out of this. I just feel it in my spirit. Stop all of that. I feel it in my spirit because just because you feel something in your spirit doesn't you mean it's God about. putting there. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> and I've had people that tell me this. Oh, and they start doing all these things that some super spiritual folks do. Oh, I, I saw, saw you coming out. Uh, you coming out real soon. And then I go into my prayer time and the Holy Ghost will be like, no, you're not coming out yet. <laughs> you got a long while in this. So you got to know and understand the voice of God for yourself, mm -hmm. even while you're in the midst of a support system. Because just like David, David had a personal prophet named Nathan. So you got to be careful who's speaking in your ear because this his personal prophet loved him. Mm -hmm. 
But guess what? He got beside himself and he told David, he said, go ahead and build the temple. Do all that is in thine heart. Mm -hmm. And God came back and said, but didn't I tell you, you were not going to build that temple. Your son is. So be careful. And let God bring the people that you need to have in your life. Because when God does it, you ain't got to worry about having off words being put in your ear and conflicting with what you know God is telling you. Go ahead, baby. Give me some notes before we go. <laughs> um, I wanted to just drop this in your ear, John um, 15. And I'm going to start in verse 4. It says, remain in me and I will remain in you. Just as no branch can bear fruit by itself unless it remains in the vine. Neither can you bear fruit unless you remain in me. I am the vine and you are the branches. The one who remains in me and I in him will bear much fruit. For apart from me, you can do nothing. And just to kind of like reiterate, reiterate what I was saying before and, you know, piggyback off my husband. Listen, when God puts you in a process, you have to be able to hear for yourself. You got to be able to hear God. Um... How do I put this? Because it just, it's just, um, how do I put this? You got to be able to hear God for yourself, okay? You got a lot of people who have good intentions. That's why they can say, I feel in my spirit. I feel in my spirit that the Lord is bringing you out. I feel in my spirit that God is about to do something, but that doesn't mean that God said it. That's just something that they feel or maybe they want it from you. But this is what I wanted to hone in on the scripture about the vine dresser, okay? Even in the midst of your um, process, in the midst of your circumstances, whatever it is that you're facing, know that you can still bear fruit in whatever season that you are. Because think about it. If you remain in God while you're going through whatever it is that you're going through, you have no choice but to produce much fruit. You have no choice but to come out on top because you're remaining in God. The Bible talks about this, and I like to always um, refer to this scripture, Jeremiah 17, 5 and Psalms 1, because it talks about um, having having a tree being planted in a desert, right? We understand that a desert is a dry place. There's no good thing that can come from a desert because it's a dry place. However, in the midst of the desert, you're able to draw because the, your foundation, your roots go deep into the ground. Hallelujah. If you remain in God, you're able to bear much fruit in whatever season that you're going through. So this is what I wanted to kind of like um, throw in there. Even though you kind of like switched a little bit, but this is what I kind of like wanted to throw in there. If they remain in God in whatever season that they're in, if they remain in God while they're going through, you have no just choice but to bear fruit in your circumstance. So we just wanted to be an encouragement to everybody. And I come to, again to reiterate, as we said at the beginning, this is not the time to complain. This is not the time to murmur. This is not the time to uh, forget that it's our obligation to show God gratitude mm -hmm. because no matter where you're at in life, God is still good. Yes. Uh, you may not have, and I've been here. So a lot of stuff I can speak to from firsthand experiences because a lot of stuff we preach good, uh, but then we start having to live it out. That's where the challenge comes. But I know trouble don't last always. And this is why I'm telling you, whatever you're dealing with, it not it doesn't just count that you go through, but how you go through the yeah. mindset, the attitude. Watch your attitude. Watch your attitude towards God. Watch your attitude towards yourself and watch your attitude towards people when yeah. you're going through. Yeah. Because God is looking at all of that mm -hmm. and he's evaluating all of that. Yeah. You see what I'm saying? Like my wife said in that scripture, John 15, the only way you can endure is if you stay connected to the vine. The only way for your roots to remain strong is what are you putting inside your ears? What are you listening to? What are you reading? What are you entertaining? Yeah. You can't expect to stand uh, in the midst of pressure and be able to stand strong while turmoil and trials and tribulations are coming your way if you're not putting the right stuff in yourself. That's right. Your diet is everything, people of God. Some of y'all need to get off of Facebook and face the book. You get what I'm saying? Get off of Facebook and face the book. Watch in this season, especially when you're in, in the midst of going through. You have to watch what you're absorbing, what you're reading, what you're listening to, the people that you're entertaining, the conversations that you're having, because it does count people. And it does make a difference in the mindset you carry while you're going through. But I, we just want to just encourage you and let you know, again, trouble don't last always. And no matter what it is you're going through, don't forget to show, have, show and have a heart of gratitude because God is still good in the midst of... 
in, in the midst of it all, I should say. Anything else you want to say? No. Okay. We love you all. Have a wonderful day. Have a wonderful Sunday. And remember, God is able. All right? So listen, I want you all, if you if you have it in you, please so. Because uh, we're ministry. We have like this many people, right? <laughs> we have like this many people. But we were able to feed just in the month of April 90 homeless people and provide people that have fallen on homeless conditions. Because yeah. when I was homeless, I ain't like to be called homeless. People that have fallen on homeless conditions. Um, so we were able to feed that many just with a handful and some partners. So we need you all to sow. The information is in our uh, caption. Uh, Cash App, House of Love, FL. Uh, or you can do PayPal, House of Love, FL at Yahoo.com. Trust me, you're sowing on good ground. Yes. And we're legit church ministry. We have our 501c3, so anything you donate is tax deductible. Yes. So we thank you in advance for whatever you sow and may the blessings of God overtake you this day. In Jesus' name, we love you all. Peace out.